Hi, good morning. I'm uh, just waking up. It's uh, 5.30 a.m. Um, probably going to get a shower and go get some cat food for my cat. I just woke up and uh, was watching an episode of a show that was, you know, successful, sort of. And it has some really good things going on about it. But then, as a writer, I was just, uh, I, I, you know, it's not, it's hard for uh, a writer to watch a show and not be critical. It, it, I, I mean, because even if I suck at writing, it, it's like I still know what is logical and, and makes sense in a story. And even if, um, you know, my writing isn't the best, I, <laughs> I'm really good at criticizing because, you know, I can see when other people are being awful also, uh, other creators. And it, it's, it makes it hard, actually, to write, uh, to be creative, because as a critic, you're just like, you can always see the flaws and then, Sometimes that can like paralyze the creative process, um, you know, and you don't even want to write or create anything because you know how ridiculous it can be um, when there's too many flaws. Um, so I'm not going to talk about the show that I'm critiquing in my mind right now, but I want to talk about something else because I think we need an example and some hope about the creative process and uh, theater, writers, producers, directors, actors. That's a team. That's a, I call that the Fantastic Four. <laughs> writers, producers, directors, and actors. Yeah, that's, that's my version of what the Fantastic Four is. And if they're not working together as a team, if, you know, if it's all run by the actors or it's all run by the directors or whatever, if it's not a well-balanced team, the product is not that great, in my opinion. Um, so I want to focus on a movie that I think was really underrated and is, it's not considered a classic. I, I wish it was, um, it's a classic in my heart <laughs> and it's definitely in my mind's library as, you know, a, a, a very well-made film. And, and um, I want to mention this movie because um, it also relates and coincides with a story, a, a real true autobiographic, autobiographical story that I want to share with you as an anecdote to provide hope in um, a time of confusion, maybe. Uh, maybe you're not confused, or maybe it's just me that's confused. But if anybody else is feeling confused about what they're seeing and hearing in reality these days, then this may help us. Um, the movie I want to mention is called Anywhere But Here, and it's a 1999 American coming-of-age comedy drama based on the novel by Mona Simpson, directed by Wayne Wang, um, from a screenplay by Alvin Sargent, and stars Susan Sarandon, Natalie Portman, and Sean Hattesey. Uh, the filming began in 1998, debuted at the Toronto International Film Festival in 1999, and was released in the U.S., in November um, of that same year. Okay, so those are the basic facts of the movie. Um, and then now we'll move to the opinion part. My opinion is this is a very, very good movie that is um, underrated and not well, maybe not well known, but it should be. Um, I wish that they this movie had received more attention because um, it explains a big piece of maybe uh, the mind of people like me who um, move a lot or or like to travel a lot or um, 
are always just looking for a better life. Uh, and in anywhere but here, you have the mom and daughter relationship that's basically being focused on. And that's symbolic of, you know, the generation gap, which happens over and over again in different cultures, countries, whatever. It's the mother-daughter relationship, how they're the same, how they're different. And it's really uh, communicated and expressed well in that movie because it's typical, but it's, you know, it's not just typical. It's typical in the fact that, yeah, the young, the young daughter, you know, has all this angst about her, her mother. But it's not typical because it also shows how close they are and how they really do understand each other, even though they're approaching things differently. And, uh, and they may have different opinions based on different experiences, but you can still see how close they are. And I like that depiction. Um, you know, moving to my personal autobiographical story that coincides with this movie, I want to say I have a memory in my mind of 1983 when um, my mom... It was the first time I ever saw my mother cry. She was uh, crying because uh, we were in New Jersey and she, things didn't go, you know, according to plan. Things fell apart for her. And um, I was in sixth grade and, you know, <laughs> I was having my own troubles in sixth grade. Um, I was, and my troubles were basically small, I guess, in comparison to what she was going through. Uh, my troubles were I was a dork, getting bullied, and I didn't want to go to school. That was my troubles. Her troubles was bigger than that. <laughs> um, basically, her relationship fell apart, and she had no idea, you know, how, how to take care of me at that point. Uh, I mean, I was in sixth grade. I still had six more years to go before I graduated high school and she was pretty much at the end of her rope. She didn't know what to do. Um, and so she just out of the blue came up with this idea. Uh, let's get out of New Jersey. Let's move to Florida. She didn't know anybody in Florida, not a soul. Uh, and, uh, you know, she just looked at me and said, I don't know what to do anymore. You want to go to Florida? And I was like, okay. Yeah, so we did. We just packed up the car and went to Florida. And there were a lot of good and bad things about that decision. But um, that's the part that coincides in my mind and in my heart with that movie, Anywhere But Here. It's a mother-daughter relationship. And it's also why it also shows why... People decide to leave somewhere. Uh, and I know, I know, because I, I, m my brain is sort of wired that way, um, conditioned in a way to just constantly keep going elsewhere. And it's uh, not everybody's like that. Military children might understand. Um, and uh, anyone who, <coughs> you know, had to move, a lot for financial or uh, environmental reasons, um, they would understand. But it, sometimes it works out, you know, it worked out for my mom. I mean, her decision to come to Florida pretty much worked out in her favor. And I guess in mine, in sort of trickle down ways. Um, but I, I didn't really like moving a lot when I was a kid. I just wanted to stay in one place and make some friends. I wanted, I thought that was, you know, normal for kids to stay in one place. And, and that's what the other kids were always talking about. I've never been anywhere, I, but they had all, you know, all kinds of friends. Um, but I don't know, maybe, maybe what I wanted was not possible. Maybe I didn't even know what, those kids who never went anywhere 
or never moved from school to school. Maybe, maybe I didn't know the th different stories about what they had seen and experienced. Um, I really don't know if there's a, an answer, you know, as far as what's a happy childhood. Uh, but um, I do know that that movie, Anywhere But Here, is a well done movie. Uh, it has a good story. It has two really wonderful characters who you, you understand. And it in and the mother daughter relationship, you know, or symbolic of a generation gap is um, is a very difficult, difficult relationship. Even the best mother daughter relationship has some stingers in it. Um, so I think it's a good movie and I think it's the kind of filming, the kind of story that we need from artistic output at this time.